Um, well, hello everyone. Welcome to this video capsule, which is part of the ILWIT project. You will find different capsules where we present uh, the outputs, the intellectual outputs, which is the teacher's book and the video game we have prepared in this project. And just check the website for more information about the project and the materials you can find uh, to uh, introduce child language brokering in, in your schools. Hi everyone, in this video capsule, uh, Mireya and I will present chapter two and provide some tips on how to use it in class. The title of this chapter is Culturally Diverse Society Societies and it, its aims are to raise awareness of cultural diversity and in particular to explore how migration has shaped today's multicultural societies in the EU. So let's start. That's it. As you will see in chapter number one of the, of the teacher's book, not knowing another person's language is already an important obstacle to communicate with them. But what about cultures? Cultures are also very important. And if we don't know anything about the other person's culture, it might also be very difficult to understand them or to uh, have a, a, an efficient communication with them. This is the main topic of chapter two. And uh, you will start by learning about different uh, definitions of cultures uh, academics has, su have suggested. You can ask your students, uh, what do they think uh, culture is? and ask them for definitions and then compare them with the ones you will find in, in chapter two. You can also ask them if they feel they belong to a specific subculture and ask them to define this specific subculture and compare the subcultures you may also have in a, in, in, in a, in, 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 in the same group. So uh, use this activity to, to make them reflect and discuss of cultural differences and what makes you feel more uh, more, more close to a culture or to another one. Now, culture is really complex. We've already uh, determined that, and, and especially because some aspects of our own culture are even invisible to us. Researchers like to talk about the cultural iceberg, which you can find on page 22. And we often tend to think that culture is the only visible part of the iceberg, where uh, our own traditions, languages, and so on and so forth. But it is also how we perceive humor or how we use body language. If we only think of the, the visible part, one of the things that usually comes to mind is food. Activity 2.8 will let your students reflect on their own views about food around the world. They may even realize that they have some cultural stereotypes or prejudices. So don't miss this chance to discuss with them why prejudices are potentially dangerous as they can lead to forms of discriminatory behavior as explained uh, in uh, chapter two. You can also use this activity to discuss how certain students have adapted to new food customs when arriving in a new country or how they miss certain dishes or meals. Uh, it is an opportunity to talk about the, the culture shock that some migrants might feel when arriving in a new cultural environment. So when you reach this uh, part of chapter two, you will have realized that language and culture are intimately intertwined and they're uh, bound together. And this becomes clear in many forms of expression. It is through language that we can share our traditions and cultural values with each other and to the next generations. You can make your students reflect on this with activity to see. Make them look for proverbs, idioms or sayings in different languages and you will see how many expressions used in world's different languages are culturally motivated. Raquel, is there an idiom in Italian to express something is not possible, like it's not going to happen, like when the English say when pigs fly? Yes, we have uh, actually used a very similar expression. We just use a different animal. So instead of pigs, we, we say, when donkeys fly. Hmm, that's a good one. In Spanish, we say, uh, cuando las ranas crían pelos, which means when frogs become hairy. And in Chinese, they say, when the sun rises from the west, uh, which is also a nice one. This, as you can see, this activity can really become very fun. And if you then try, to guess the origins of the idioms, you will 
for sure find cultural explanations to these, uh, to these expressions. According to the sapir word hypothesis, the language we speak shapes and determines the way we are able to perceive reality. In fact, that is no longer believed to be true, since the differences between languages are not so great that understanding among peoples is impossible. However, most linguists do agree with a weak version of the hypothesis, and they would tell us that the way we express these idioms and the things around us in general do have an influence in our thought and perception of the world. This is what you will find in, in chapter two, and you will find also more examples and definitions that you can use in, in your classes with your students. In migration contexts, uh, bilingual children grow up being influenced by at least two different languages and cultures and must negotiate the role that each culture and language plays in their identity, how it is shaped, and feelings of belonging. Activity 2B may be a nice way of comparing how your students have experienced tales at home. If they come from different cultural um, uh, contexts, they may be able to share beautiful or maybe scary or even creepy bedtime stories. And this activity can be a good way of comparing how wisdom is transmitted from older generations to their children in different cultures. If your class is mainly monocultural, make your students search for tales from other countries and cultures and share them in the next class. You, you will find much more information to complement the activities in the chapter. And also remember to check the orange boxes if you want to get the main ideas in just a glimpse. We hope that you have enjoyed reading this um, chapter uh, and we're sure that it will allow you to discuss cultural diversity with your students because it also offers some food for thought on other cultural aspects too.